What's up everyone, I am Crypto Decode on Twitter and this is going to be an unboxing video of the new Trezor Model T, a hardware wallet to keep your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies safe. So the Model T is the latest product from Trezor. I actually pre-ordered it a couple of months ago. I just got it today with this little thank you note. So without further ado, let's cut to the chase and let's cut this plastic wrapper open. One thing I noticed on this new model is there is no security seal visible on the outside of the packaging, which was the case for the previous one. Once the plastic is removed, you can slide off this white part of the box and it uncovers the Trezor Model T itself. It is still protected behind a plastic screen. I guess at this step you're supposed to pause for a second and meditate at what the safest place for your coins actually is. Okay, this black box is actually closed by a magnetic strip that you will find at the bottom. That might be a little bit overkill for a box that you will probably not reuse after you've taken out your hardware wallet from it. Anyways, here's what you see when you finally get to open the black box. First you will notice there's three steps to get started. One, connect your Trezor to computer or smartphone. Two, open the correct web page in your browser. And three, follow the instructions. Okay, let's go ahead and take out the accessory box. Oh, this actually uncovers a fourth bonus step, which is that you can place the dock anywhere for your convenience. We'll see what that means. All right, let's open the accessory box, which is supposed to contain the USB cable, user manual, and recovery seat card. Here we go. Okay, box empty. Let's put it aside. So here's the USB cable, it's about twice as long as in the previous model. That's a good thing, because it was definitely too short before. And even better, they didn't make it too long, like it is, for example, way too long on the Ledger Nano S, competing hardware wallet if you don't know it. All right, after that, you've got a series of stickers in case you want to promote Trezor. You have the recovery seat card, which has space for you to write down 12 words. Interestingly enough, it used to be 24 words on the previous model. Another thing to notice is that the card is now made out of plastic, not out of paper, which makes it probably more durable. If you're not used to recovery seeds, it always seems a little bit weird and magical that you can back up your whole device just with 12 words written on a sheet of paper, or plastic in this case, but trust me, it really works. I tried it out on the previous model. And to make it complete, you also get a teeny little getting started manual. Okay, so let's get to the device itself. First, let's take away this filler holding piece made out of foam. And here's the device, and it is magnetically attached to what I guess is to be called the dock. The magnet seems to be pretty strong here. And there's sticky stuff under this protection paper, so I guess the dock is ready to be stuck up anywhere. Maybe on the bezel of a monitor or maybe under a desk, I don't know. If you want to play it like they do in the movies. Which is fine as long as you remember that hiding your treasure under the desk is not the part that is going to make your coins secure. Alright, so let's go back to the hardware wallet itself. Let's get rid of all that clutter and let's focus on the USB port on the device. As you can see here, the USB port is actually covered with a security seal which has a hologram with a brand treasure on it. This is a seal that I expected to find on the outside box and which is now actually on the device itself, which is probably even better. The seal is there to show you that your device has not been tampered with in between the moment it left the factory and the moment it arrived to your home. This guarantees that no third party was able to pre-initialize the device with a seed that they would know, or even more malicious, that no third party was able to change the firmware inside the device. As you can see here, if I try to put back the seal after I removed it, it really shows that it has been opened before. The Trezor brand on the hologram is not legible anymore. So I think it's a good thing to have this self-destructing seal on the device. The only drawback is it leaves glue and sticker parts on the device itself, which are going to be pretty hard to remove. But well, when it comes to hardware wallets, I'm all for security first. So. Ideally, I would also need to check if the device can be opened from the top without damaging the seal. 
but if I tried that right now, I might actually damage the thing before I even tested it. That's not what I want. So now that we have removed the seal, we can actually connect the USB cable. Notice it's a USB-C connector, which is actually the new emerging standard for USB. Also something nice about USB-C is you can plug in the connector either way, whereas with the old model, which was micro USB, you would connect it the wrong way half of the time. Now when you compare the old model to the new model, you can notice that the old one had two buttons to interact with it, whereas the new one has no buttons at all. It's actually equipped with a touchscreen, which should make the interface smoother, but that's something we will see when we test the software. I also noticed this little slot on the side, which looks like it might be a micro SD reader, although there's no mention of this at all, neither on the packaging nor on the user manual. But let's see what happens if we insert a micro SD card in there. Here we go, first attempt. It actually fits in pretty well, and I can feel there's a spring in there, which is pretty typical of a micro SD reader. All right, now I have the card stuck in there, let's see if I can get it out. Whoops, that spring is really strong. It has been literally ejected. Okay, let's try this again, see if we can do it better the second time. As before, it's pretty difficult to get it in, but here we are. Now let's see if we can get it out without making it fly. Yes, success. All right, so I'm going to assume this is in fact a micro SD reader. We'll have to see later what it can be used for. Now let's turn this thing on. The Trezor Model T, as well as any other hardware wallet that I know of, has no internal battery and the only way to turn it on is to power it through the USB cable. And that's what I'm doing right now. So in this video the screen looks a little bit weird, but that's due to the camera frame rate. In reality the screen is nice, white and steady. So as you can see here, I can do nothing but go to trezor.io slash start. Touchscreen doesn't work for now. So I will do as it asks, but I will do that in part two of this video. If you'd like to see it, please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Also, don't forget to click the little notification bell. This way you'll be alerted as soon as part two is available. And last but not least, this is my first video on this channel. If you could give it a thumbs up, it would mean the world to me. Thank you so much and see you in part two.